Hey everybody, Danny Mod here. Thanks for joining us. If you've seen this video, you've probably seen the title, The Three Death Moves. Well, in this week's training, we're gonna tackle the three most common problems when people hit driver. We're gonna give you some exercises to do. We're gonna show you some of the problems of those exercises and how you can overcome them. And by the end of it, hopefully, you're gonna hit your driver so much straighter, so much longer, and have something really clear to work on over the next few weeks. So, let's get cracking with uh, death move number one. So number one, the first move I see when people take the club back is this. The club generally comes inside. This is, comes around the corner, all right? The face of the club starts to fan and it comes in, inside here. Now two things are happening here. The left arm is becoming disconnected from the body and the club itself, the head, is going behind the body. Where should it be? Well, we actually want the head much, much more in line here with the left arm connected. So let me give you a little simple exercise you can do to start improving this straight away. So, first thing we do, really simple, grab a T-peg, stick it in the end of your driver like this, and then when you move back, all we're gonna do here is we're gonna move, keep this left bicep nice and tight to the chest. We're gonna move the arms uh, over the right knee here, so as soon as the right, uh, the both hands are over the right knee, the T-peg should be pointing just inside your right hip, in between your belt buckle and your right hip here, and you'll notice the club's online. Watch the difference here. If I allowed my hands to come in, or the club, uh, club head to, uh, to come in, whereas the T-pointing is now starting to point over here, and there often is a disconnection here. So this isn't, by the way, when some people work on this, they've, they've heard of this before and they try and get the club online, but what they're doing is, is they're doing it in a very disconnected way, where the arms are becoming, the left arm is moving away from their body. Keep it nice and connected all the time. That helps to coordinate the turn, as well as keeping the club online. Real simple exercise, works really, really well. All right, death move number two. Death move number two involves people or golfers over swinging with their driver, forcing the right elbow to come out here and the club shaft to go across the line with the T-pit that we put in earlier pointing in that direction. Now, there's a couple of reasons I think uh, people do this. One of the reasons is there's an assumption that in order to complete your backswing, the club should be parallel. But for a lot of golfers out there, they're not flexible enough to, to swing to a parallel position at the top. So what they do is they make compensations. They get to a point here and the back starts to get a little bit tight and their arms do the rest of the work here. And that causes their arms, the right elbow, to start to fly and swing across the line. The other aspect is some people are flexible enough. The problem is, it feels easier to complete the backswing with an arm movement. So what happens is, is they get to a point here, they get to um, a little bit, it's a little bit tight, and it's just far easier to bring the arms back. Now this causes this problem itself with the arms drifting around the body here. So how do we get rid of this one? It's a real simple one. We've got the T-peg here, which we kept from the first death move. We're gonna keep the arms over the right knee here, but then when we swing back, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wind it back here keeping this left bicep nice and connected, and we're gonna work on pointing the T-peg at the end of the alignment stick that I put on the ground here. So watch this. When I'm winding back here, I'm gonna point that T-peg at the end of the alignment stick there. Big difference because if I allow this to go now, where's, my where's the T-peg pointing? Way over here. So this really restricts your amount of turn, but it keeps you nice and connected here and put, sets a really good position at the top of the backswing. The other thing it's doing obviously here is keeping the club in front of the body here. It's not letting it drift back too far behind. When it drifts back behind here, that causes problems in itself. The club falls behind. We often react and come over the top. Some people who stay there and come this way end up slicing it or blocking it to the right. So into summary here, when you swing back, we're gonna go over the right knee, hold this in position here, then we're gonna simply point the T-peg at the top, at the end of the alignment shaft there, and that sets you up in a really good position at the top of the backswing, up to your flexible limit. Death move number three is a real common one, and that involves people, golfers, hitting down on the golf ball as opposed to hitting up on the ball. Now, signs that you're doing this, Sky tee shots, balls that are flying too high up in the air, marks on the top of your driver, a sure signal, or even very, very low shots where you're catching, you're de-lofting the driver too much and the ball's uh, uh, heading off way too low. Now, here's what we want to do with driver. We want to make sure that when we're striking a driver, we're actually striking up on the shot. So the low point 
of the arc here is slightly behind the golf ball and the club is on its way up. Now there's a few things we can do in the setup to make this happen. The ball position needs to make sure it's inside your left heel. Your head needs to be slightly behind the ball and your hands also need to be slightly behind the golf ball. We want a shoulder tilt here so the right shoulder is fractionally lower and then what you're doing is this angle you're creating is naturally creating an upward strike. So there's some interesting things or basic things we need to put into the setup that will really, really encourage an upward strike. But they don't guarantee it because as you know, during a golf swing, those things can potentially change. So what can we do to help you when you're swinging here to come through the shot and actually strike up on this driver? Well, one very, very simple exercise you can do is take your golf ball. Here I've got a tight list. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the tight list logo. I'm going to tilt it slightly downwards just so I can barely, just about see the logo below there. And what I can do is if I have my head over here, I actually can't see the tight list logo. But if I just tilt fractionally back now, I can just about see it. And what I want to be able to do here as I'm, as I'm swinging here, I want to make a swing. And as I'm swinging backwards and forwards, I want to make sure that the tight list stays in my view. Just like that. So, in summary guys, we've got three death moves. Death move number one. We want the hands over the right knee. Use the T-peg here pointed just inside your right hip, in between your bell buckle and your right hip, that stops the club coming from inside. When you're doing it, make sure you keep this left arm connected, really important because it pulls the body around as you do it. This is disconnected, we definitely don't want that. From, next, from the next position here, from this position here, we're gonna make a backswing and we're gonna point this T-peg over to the end of the alignment stick which we put parallel in line with the golf ball here. And again, what that does is it encourages you to keep a much more controlled backswing, one that isn't a big arm movement here, whether you're flying right elbow or the arm's been dragged around. It keeps the arms in front of the body nice and tight here. And the third and final thing was obviously we didn't want to come down on the golf ball, we need to strike up on the golf ball. What have we done there? We've changed your setup slightly so you sit a little bit more behind to encourage a more upward strike. And just an in-swing thing here to really, really help you is just tilt the logo slightly downwards so that you can actually see it as you strike up on that driver, maintaining your eyes on the back of that logo there to really encourage an upward strike. I hope you really, really enjoyed this video. As normal, guys, if you know any of your friends that could really benefit from this training, particularly if they're struggling with their driver, please share it. It really, really helps. And as normal, if you're like, really liking the content and you'd like to see, see more of this every single week, please subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. Leave your comments in the comments box below if you've got any questions. And until next week, have a great golfing week.